Andrew Armitage here, um, having some issues with a rough idle, uh, hard starting condition when the vehicle is cold, uh, some other issues. Uh, the cruise control doesn't work, which is an indicator that uh, possibly there's a problem with our ECM. I'll start the car up. So what I have to do to get it to start uh, was give it a little gas when we're starting, uh, which is normally not what you need to do. Another indicator that points to the ECM is the fact that there's always zero miles per gallon, even when you zero miles per gallon average, fuel use zero, range low, it's always low because it's zero. Uh, that uh, is an indicator that the ECM is not communicating with the body control module, the BCM. So we're going to hit off and warmer and hold it to enter the diagnostic. There we go. F32, F48, F32 is the ECM not communicating with the BCM, so that means one of them is not working or the wiring in between the two is not good. Uh, more than likely it is one or the other, uh, but due to the fact that the cruise control doesn't work and we have these idling issues uh, where this is, it's, uh, it's definitely a rough idle. Even when the car warms up, it's a little bit better, but the idle is constantly varying like it's searching for where it should be the other code f48 was the uh, low coolant uh, code and that was uh, because we're doing air conditioning work and the system is not pressurized right now so that's understandable uh, so we're going to exit diagnostic mode by hitting auto but uh, yeah, we have a new ECM and we're gonna swap it out with the, uh, the old one. I'll show you where that, uh, how we do that. That's uh, located behind the glove box. Step one, disconnect the battery. All right, now we gotta take down this, this hush panel is what the uh, service manual calls it. Uh, seven millimeter nuts that will uh, come down and give you access underneath the dash. And then way down here towards the, uh, the vents on the floor there's a couple more uh, push nuts that you got to remove. Now we got the uh, that panel out of the way. Our ECM is all the way. There's the dash. Uh, all kinds of uh, fuses and wiring. ECM is all the way back here. This is it here. So what we can do is unplug these and plug a replacement ECM that we have, which already has, still has the, the prom in it from the last vehicle, because this is a used item. We can plug it in and see if it works before we go and dig that out of the dash and replace it and find out that that's not the problem, or this one is defective as well. Okay, so uh, those are disconnected. They're a little, uh, they're in there snugly. So uh, you're gonna have to pull on them. You know, you push these clips down and give it a tug. So the old one's still in there. These are the only two connections. And before we go and uh, go through this big ordeal of taking it out and swapping it and finding out it's not the problem. We'll just plug it in here and uh, we will start up, uh, re uh, reattach the battery and start it up. We should know almost immediately if it works. According to the service manual, once the uh, ECM has been replaced, what we're going to do is uh, start the car. Yeah, the, I reconnected the, the battery and then we're going to enter the diagnostic. 
and it should display E52 over here showing that it works. If it displays, I'm sorry, F52, if it displays anything else, like uh, F32, means that we have a problem somewhere else or we have two defective units in a row, which is probably unlikely. So. So we have a little bit of a rough start, but that's probably because we have a new computer in there. It needs to relearn the, uh, all the engines. So here's E52, which is a good sign because we had F32 before, and we have the service engine soon service vehicle soon codes have popped up um, we'll go ahead and clear those out and see if they come back it's, it's the next step in the shop manual is to clear all codes out so we go off and low and clear that out off and high that clears all the engine codes out. So let's, uh, let's kill the engine. It says give it 10 seconds and then we're going to restart it and see what it sounds like. We'll take it around the block for a test drive. And let's hope that uh, that solves our problem. Sounds better already. Oh, look at that. No service engine soon, no check engine soon, and let's see, well, too soon to know if this works yet, but we're going to go around the block and I'll report back. So this is a good indication that it works. We have uh, miles per gallon, which before was always zeroed out, it would never change. Uh, so that's working now. And the car seems to be idling better and started up right away, which uh, before it would definitely not uh, start and idle consistently without giving it a little bit of gas. Uh, but it would stay like that with that uh, hard, uh, rough idle until the car was fully warmed up. So that's a, uh, a very good sign. Also, as an added bonus, I just turned my cruise control on. And guess what? It works. So, uh, it fixed that problem too. Okay, so we took uh, the connectors off the test unit, which we're gonna replace. And according to the shop manual, there is only one nut holding this in, and it appears to be a 10 millimeter, which I forgot in the toolbox. So that 10 millimeter nut comes out and the computer just drops down. That's it. That's all it's holding in there. So we'll put that on the side and we'll put our new one up in there and reconnect it in the opposite uh, manner. So we'll, uh, let's see here. Well, if you want to watch, it just slides up. Let's get it in there appropriately. Well, it's going to be a two handed job to get it uh, positioned correctly. So you just have to fish around and it's going to eventually, uh, you'll find it, put it in there. The, uh, that stud that sticks out of the bottom of the computer is going to uh, fit into that slotted mount. So it just sets in the, uh, in the, the computer holder, the ECM holder, put that 10 millimeter 
bolts in there, or nut, I'm sorry. And these connectors only go in one, one spot. Can't mix them up. So go ahead and snap that in there. Snap that one in there. And you're all hooked up. Here's a tip. Uh, if you're having trouble getting those to seat properly, I use the, the, the end of my quarter inch drive and I put it right on this blue clip and I push up. I don't like pushing against wires because uh, you push hard enough, you might disconnect it, pull it out of the out of the uh, connection. So this is uh, a little bit better uh, tactic to use. So they're seated and now it's just a matter of putting the, uh, the hush panel back up. Also, uh, one of the other items that this could have been was, uh, you know, that would cause this problems is uh, the uh, the prom not being properly seated in the ECM. Um, I went ahead and removed the the three screws. They're quarter inch hex head screws. Then I had to take a uh, common screwdriver and pry it up. So it could be that. This is the bad part and not the ECM. And that would be why it doesn't remember any settings and basically has to relearn all the engine, engine sensor positions and calibrations uh, every single time you start the car up because it's not remembering anything. The shop manual says to check to see if it's properly seated. I don't know how it can not be properly seated unless someone tampered with it. And this does not appear that that cover has ever been off since this car was manufactured. So um, what we're going to do is hold on to this ECM. We'll put it on the shelf. We'll mark it as not being good uh, along with the prom. And then if in the future, if we have this problem again, uh, what we can do is send this known bad one off to be repaired test it and repaired and then uh, in the meantime we could continue driving our car and once we get it back we could swap it out um, or these other services have you they send you out a, uh, a new ECU or a remanufactured one you send your old one back in we could use this as a core uh, but one way or another we know that somewhere in this unit there is a problem whether it's the ECM or the the prom but uh, fortunately one we pulled out of the junkyard works great, and uh, it only costs us forty dollars or uh, fifty, I think fifty three dollars total with the tax and everything. There was one at another junkyard that was forty dollars, but it doesn't come didn't come with a warranty. This one was warranted for thirty days, which was important because if I plugged it in and it didn't work, um, I'd want my money back. So uh, we have everything put back together. It's a fairly easy swap and inexpensive. That's how your car should start and sound very easily, especially with uh, no other problems and it's properly tuned, which we just did the intake manifold gasket as well as all the electrical uh, ignition parts. And uh, you'd hear that the uh, I hope you could hear that the idle is very stable and uh, it sounds like it's at an appropriate level and in fact it just kicked down because the car's warmed up whereas before it would stay at a high idle almost all the time and then uh, bounce around so even sounds better. And again you're going to have to drive the car for a couple days for the computer to relearn all the settings because um, obviously it, it came out of another car that all the sensors were adjusted ever so slightly different and uh, maybe in different positions. So this computer needs to relearn your driving habits and uh, it will drive better, get better fuel economy in a couple days after uh, some continuous driving.